How's it going guys? So today we are doing a really quick one. This is how to do a power function. Um, I'm just kind of going over each function that I made in this math data pack. Uh, just so because they, they have some interesting concepts to them. Um, anyways, I've been working a lot on the server so nothing too crazy to show you guys right now because I'm getting really close to release for that guy. But anyways, so the power data pack, basically uh, the power function. So if I set the display sidebar, math in so I'm gonna set my math in score to two all right and then I'm gonna set my math in one score to four so what that means is it's gonna do two times two times two times two which is 16 so if I check the math out and then I do math power a 16 okay so the feature of this data pack that differs from other math data packs is i'm not doing a consistent amount of commands which i guess could be a downside um all these functions are variable command sizes so when you play power you don't really know how many commands it's playing because it's based on what numbers you have but it is very optimized so the method i used for this was kind of an interesting one which is why i'm making this video in the, to begin with so it's really simple, but the trick it uses is kind of an exploit that a lot of people don't like about functions. It's a trick, it's something that I almost never had the opportunity to use productively. So first we're going to put the uh, number two or the in score onto the out, right? Then we are going to remove one from the second score because that's just what you do. And then we are going to if the second score is greater than two, we are going to play this function again. So here's where it kind of kicks in. So with power, I can't just do two times uh, the second score, which is two, because that just won't work. I can't do times equals. I have to do it iteratively, the same number over and over. So how do we figure out how many times to play this well you could just have a bunch of times equals commands like times equals and then just have like maybe 30 lines so then you can go up to any number to the power of 30 which makes sense but this is kind of an interesting impl uh, implementation so when you play a function again on itself so anytime that you play a function if i type slash function what it does is it pauses the game then it does the list of ordered list in order. And then wherever it was last at, it goes back to that location. So if I'm in a function and I play a function, it will pause whatever commands it's doing. Nothing under it will play. It will go inside that function, do the list of commands, and then come back outside and continue. And this is where things get interesting. You basically create a weird nested loop. So this right here creates a loop where it plays this command, plays this command, then it plays itself again. So it's not gonna get to this bottom line. What it does is it stops here. Oh, let me zoom in so that it's easier for you to see. All right, sorry about that. So first it moves out onto in, then it removes one, and then it plays itself again. So all this is this three lines is doing is making it play itself X amount of times, as many amount of times as there is math in one scores. So. If there's a five on here, it's going to play itself essentially four times, but it played itself originally one time, so that adds up to be five. So what we do is we do this line, we do this line, then if this one works, then we're going to stop. We're not gonna play this guy, we're gonna stop. We're going to play the same file again, which does this line, this line, and back to here. And it's gonna keep going. But now this is the weird thing, this last one down here, the amount of times anything under this line is played is dependent on the amount of times this function is ran. So the first time we hit the button like this, it's like, okay, well, after we're, we got to here, we're going to play something else. But once we're done playing this, we're going to jump back out and play this command. Okay. So it knows it wants to play it once. But if you go inside, then it knows it wants to play this command again from the inside so you, you basically get into a point where the amount of times this is run is equal to the amount of times this is run and this is where people go wrong with ray casting in ray casting people will do uh you know they'll put command a 
Command B, Command C, they'll put the ray casting here, the thing that loops. And then they'll put something afterwards because they're like, well, once the ray casting line hits a block, I don't, if you don't know what ray casting is, I have a separate tutorial on it, but it basically just draws a line in the direction the player is looking until it like hits some block or entity. But what they do is they put these commands and then they put this command, which is the one that loops it because it's supposed to just loop moving forward step by step. Uh, it's more like ray marching, but anyway. Um, then they'll put something after because they're like, oh, so logically after it's done looping, I want it to do this, it's gonna set the block to stone or something. But that's actually really bad because what happens is, let's say it takes a hundred iterations or a, a thousand iterations of your loop to march your little line over to the block you're looking at. What it does is it does this, this last command or whatever commands you have after it that many times. So if it takes a thousand times to get over here, it's gonna play set block a thousand times or maybe you wanna add a scoreboard, it's gonna add a thousand times. And that's not what you want. So ideally, if you don't want this weird artifact to happen where it happens, where it plays the remaining stuff depending on how many times it looped, um, if you're doing rate casting, you just stop. Whatever code you used to play this initial command, right under that line you put the extra stuff you want to do uh, later or what you do is you add somewhere in between here a line that says if blah 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 like basically all the criteria reversed so if it is not in an air block then play a function if it is in an air block then loop itself so you have to mess with that but in this case it actually turned out to be beneficial because what we want to do is we want to it re, like multiply something by itself x amount of times so we figure out the x amount of times by creating a by looping itself and then <laughs> making the bottom half of the function aka this one command play depending on how many times it looped itself so that's kind of an interesting little thing and a lot of times it's not a good part but it's good to be to know that this is something that happens with functions when you loop them. It's a good thing to know, and you'll probably come across it pretty often if you do this a lot. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully on the server. Peace.